Welcome back, Alf Hunters. The market is closed for the first week of 2023, and let's figure out what's going on. So last week, I was kind of expecting a little bit more of a move out of the range. I kind of thought it would happen earlier this week. Well, um, we had volatility all week. I did promise that. I promised we would have volatility this week. And then eventually, we did pop out of the range on Friday this week. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the intraday price action for the week. So as you can see here, starting on the first trading day of 2023, January 3rd, nice little 15 minute uh, doji candle that kind of come in, uh, nice little gap up on the market and then uh, sold off, went right down to basically where we kind of the lows that we'd been in over the previous two, three weeks. So not really too much was going on. We didn't, we, we saw some volatility across Tuesday into Wednesday even into Thursday, but we didn't really get out of that range. And, and you kind of looked at Thursday, the kind of the way we ended, kind of just at these lows, had a nice little pop midday, and then ended at the lows on Thursday. And you really kind of thought we might roll down on Friday. I'm really kind of glad we didn't. We'll get into that here in a bit. But then Friday comes out, the market popped higher on some jobs and numbers, and then there were some other economic data that came out shortly after the market opened, and the market just kind of took off for the rest of the day. Broke the top end of the channel, intraday on Friday. So basically went from the lows of the channel that we'd been in over the previous couple of weeks and broke through the upper ends of the channel that we kind of been in over the past couple of weeks. So finally getting out of that channel. So we'll finally see the market do something. All right. So I'm going to move kind of quick in this video. And one of the things you'll notice, this is the sector performance for all the S&P 500 sectors, okay, uh, for how they kind of performed out this week. And we just kind of want to see what the money flow was like. You know, it was a new year, ca new capital starts to get allocated immediately. This is one reason why I did think we would break out of the channel earlier in the week, but we ended up breaking out on, of the channel on Friday. And, you know, we see... You know, technology still lagging pretty good. Uh, it had a really good run on Friday. Not going to lie, Friday tech was really good, the XLK. But people still came in and sold it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So still not looking the best. Energies were actually down pretty good on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday. Obviously, you can see they started to turn around pretty good on Thursday and carried into Friday, getting back into the middle of the pack area. So then healthcare utilities also on the weaker side, which they've been more of the defensive areas of the stock market. Some of the other areas in the market that were doing pretty good, the XLC, so some of those communication companies that are lumped in there, materials, XLB, the industrials, XLI, XLF was doing pretty good. XLF actually did pretty good the entire week. If you do want to go look at a chart for the XLF and some of those other financial stocks like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, definitely go check that out. They did really good this whole week. XLP, XLY, Staples, Discretionary, right almost in line with each other. XLP barely outperforming Discretionary this week. Yeah, we're, we're seeing uh, some pretty good money flow already out there. Some pretty good variances, you know, with, you know, tech, down 1% on the week, and then XLC communication areas up 3% on the week. So definitely seeing some of that money flow already in the new year. Looking at the VIX here, so obviously on the daily, January 3rd, nice little gap up, market gapped up a little bit, but we had a little implied volatility gap up there on January 3rd. So not a huge deal, and then it kind of came back down, normalized, got back to where it ended last year pretty quick, then on Wednesday. Kind of hung out a little bit on Thursday. Friday, as the market turned really bullish on Friday, definitely fell off. Uh, we're going to take a look at the PCC here in a minute. But yeah, the VIX kind of just hanging out. And you, you know, if you still want to be bearish, you definitely just want this thing to hang out between about the 19. So basically the low that it had back in December 2nd to about the 25 area. You kind of just want it to kind of continue to chop around in that range. Hopefully the market is rolling over. But if the market does start to go too bullish, You'll probably see this, the VIX wind up coming down, breaking that low. You don't really want to see it break this low that it put in back over here. So at least that's what I'm looking for right now in the VIX, just for it to continue to hang out in here. Maybe the market has a little bit of a push higher going into next week, but probably continues to move in the bearish direction after that. Take a look here at the DXY and the dollar. Very nice push higher, breaking higher on Tuesday and Thursday, but Friday as we got some of that data to come in, just absolutely collapsed there on the dollar. And you'll see the follow through on gold here in a second. But yeah, 
dollar dropping off i don't really know how what this is going to do here because we did break through pretty good on the bullish side maybe this is just a retest lower and we'll probably continue higher maybe later that would be probably my assumptions i don't think we're going to just drop off here and continue to go bearish i would at least like to see it make a run a little bit higher before you start to make more moves back in that bearish direction on the dxy Looking at the US 10 year yield, definitely dropping pretty good. Through the course, most of the week as we got into the new year, the 10 year just kind of dropped off, especially on Friday. So yeah, it looks like it's gonna come right back down to at least these lows. Might even just keep going as it, it did make a very nice retest back into that 3.9 level. So yeah, maybe it's just gonna keep rolling lower and we'll just have to wait and see maybe what that leads to here over the next couple of weeks. But I think the major thing to be watching here on rates is really kind of this 10 and two year inversion. If the 10 and two year inversion starts to really start to push back, starts to make a move back to the non-inverted area, you know, taking out this high that we just put in late in December would be very important as we might really see this thing run up. But rest assured, if you are seeing that, we're probably seeing some really bearish moves on the market. The GLD gold, obviously just mentioned it with the dollar getting crushed off on Friday. You see gold getting a strong follow through, probably towards the upper end of its move. Zooming out here a little bit. We got some nice little areas back in 2022, 2021, where it's now coming into some pretty good top areas. Yeah, I still wanna see this thing pull back before I try to get in long. It's made a nice little move. A lot of this in, in around the 167, 168, 170 area was really choppy. Getting through, it looks like a lot of people are saying, okay, let's just go to the next level. I think we're probably mostly there. We did have a pretty good follow through on gold this week. Probably continue bullish a little bit early next week. After that, it's gonna be really tough uh, as we're getting into some of those resistance levels. All right, the HYG, the high yield corporate bonds. We came right into that 200 moving average on a daily again on Friday. So what does that mean? Well, I don't really know what that means. Definitely could mean a little bit more bearish activity as the last time we hit the 200, we went bearish right off of hitting it back in uh, early December from the CPI morning back on December 13th. You know, we could definitely reverse out, you know, definitely watch the HYG early this next week. I would expect the stock market to kind of continue a little bit bullish this early this next week. I wouldn't say crazy bullish, but watch the HYG as if it starts to come back down a little bit, it might front run the market in the bearish move that's probably gonna come here starting later next week and going into the week after, okay? LQD, kind of the same picture, not quite getting to that 200 on a daily, but it doesn't look too much indifferent. I think you're just really gonna be watching the relationship that the stocks and the bond markets are kind of putting in this next week. If stocks are moving a little bit higher, but the bond markets aren't really, and maybe the bond markets are taking a little bit off, might give you a little bit of foretell of what's maybe to come out of the stock market, okay? Okay, so the PCC here, this is the chart of the PCC or the put call ratio. This is not something I typically cover all that much on the channel. I do when it, I think it's significant a lot of people talking about it, if we can get any value out of it. Typically it's pretty hard to get value out of it. It mostly hangs around the 1.0 line, which is basically balanced between put and call buying or put and call orders in the system. And what you notice, I'm gonna put the cursor right here around that 2.0 line. And if you look to the left, there's a lot of times where we have spiked up over that 2.0 line. There's a lot of times. And you notice we got this dead spot right in here. Well, what is this dead spot? Well, the last time before December, right, we did pop over it back here in December. This is why a lot of people are talking about it, is we did pop over that 2.0 line in December. The last time we did it was in April of 2020. Man, could anybody remember what happened in April and March of 2020? Well, that was the COVID crash, right? That was the COVID crash, and that was us coming out of the COVID crash then in April. So we had roughly two and a half years, a little bit over two and a half years, where we did not get over the 2.0 line on the PCC. And that is the longest of any time that this thing has been tracking since late of 2006. And for the entire year of 2022, we barely even got over 1.5. And the market's been down like 20% multiple times, and we finally just got to 2.0% in December. So this tells you 
that, oh my gosh, don't be freaking out because... I mean, there was plenty of times in the bull run during the 2010s where we were definitely hitting over 2.0% on the PCC, and we've just recently done it once. So don't think that, oh my gosh, the bottom might be in just because the PCC breached 2.0%. That's not a big deal. Because I would say the normal market, we should be breaching it, I would say at least maybe once, twice a year, uh, maybe if not more, but... You know, the past two and a half years were probably more of the anomaly than not. It just kind of goes to show you still the mindset in the marketplace of complacency. You know, complacency around being bullish in the marketplace. So let's just run through some of these index ETFs real quick. Just kind of see what's going on. And obviously we already saw the SPY and how it was breaking up out of its channel. And you notice here on the Qs, the Qs haven't. They did not break Tuesday's high. So they're kind of still in that channel range. And I would expect them to probably break out of their channel early this next week. Maybe make a little bit of a run. Maybe up to this high that we put in probably on December 21st at least. After that, man, I don't I don't know. You know, you can tell it's, it's still back at its bear market lows. And if this thing just kind of continues to go sideways down here and starts to just kind of drop off, yeah, it's not going to be looking good for tech. So tech might be leading in the bearish direction still and not really to me worth anything to, to be getting into on money wise, even though they had a heck of a day on Friday. And that's where you're going to continue to see. They're going to lead in that bearish direction. And then when the market's going to have a snapback, the Qs, Tech, they're going to lead it in those snapbacks. They're going to have crazy, awesome, bullish days. The IWM here looking pretty good. Nice little basing pattern, almost like an inverted head and shoulders pattern kind of coming in here. But you're going to come into some resistances pretty quick here on the IWM. It's one to be a little cautious on, but it has been one that's been more bullish, especially here over the past week and a half compared to like the SPY and the Qs. The DIA, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, very had a very nice top end of this channel right here around the 334 area. Pretty much went right through it, not even close to getting contested. And it pulled right into this little kind of rounded bottom that it had in the beginning of December before we get the CPI numbers. So might be a little bit of a resistance there. We'll see if it continues to push higher going into the next week. It probably will. I don't see why it wouldn't. But, you know, Apple is awaiting in the DIA that, you know, if Apple continues to struggle, might continue to push down the DIA. But some of these moves on these averages, I think, are just meant to get people to think a little too much about flipping their positions as we go into next week. So then as we come back and look at the SPY here, let's just get a game plan. So obviously we did not break out of this trading range like I thought we would earlier this week. Obviously we're not gonna break down. We broke out and you know we're probably just gonna come up here and kind of just hang out for a bit. I think we're gonna get up into the 390, lower 390 area. I, maybe 395 possibly I don't expect too much higher than that and a big reason why is we have Wednesday we get CPI data and when we were on the live stream earlier we we're kind of looking through some of the calendar events coming up for this next week so we are going to get CPI data Wednesday morning but Tuesday morning about 30 minutes before the market opens we're going to get Jerome Powell to be talking at you know, some conference or some speech somewhere. Uh, I didn't really look and see what it was or what it was pertaining to or where it was, but he will be talking. And you know what? It doesn't even matter where or what he's going to be talking about. The market will be listening to see if they can get any kind of insight as to what they are looking to do. And, you know, he's been very adamant about his plan. So I wouldn't expect them to come out and announce any kind of deviation from their plan uh, about interest rates. And if anything, the, the, the fact that we've seen jobs numbers and certain other economic stuff to kind of come out over the past few weeks since the CPI and the FOMC in mid-December just kind of lets me think, yeah, they're going to continue on their path because we're still seeing really strong jobs, unemployment, and that kind of stuff. So it definitely makes me think we're just going to get up here, hang out. And then start a rollover. And we might start it maybe even earlier this next week. Maybe like Tuesday, Wednesday. Depending upon what you know, Mr. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell says. CPI data. But this next Friday, make sure you are starting to watch the earnings. Because we are going to get earnings from major financial companies starting on Friday, January 13th this next week. It is going to be important. Those are going to be the first 
major companies to be reporting. And the past couple of quarters when the financial companies have been talking about earnings, they haven't been saying bullish things. They really haven't. They have not been saying bullish things at all. They've been talking about market illiquidity, tougher interest rate environments and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm not really expecting a whole lot of bullish activity as we continue to go into later parts of next week and as we get into the early parts of the week after, you know, January 17th and January 18th, that kind of stuff. But I am glad that we kind of popped bullish out of here. I did want to see a retest into some of these lows that we put in through the latter parts of November, the beginning parts of December, around this 390 level, which had been a pretty major support and resistance level through past several months of activity. So I did want to see us retest into that because we obviously have not clearly retested into it since we broke it down in mid-December. So we've just kind of been hanging out. We finally got a direction. We finally got out of that stupid channel and you know the market can get to moving again. So if it kind of comes up here and it can't break through, it sits a couple days maybe at these zones, yeah, people are going to come back in and push it back down. The thing to know here is... If you're thinking about flipping positions, this is this is what Wall Street does. This is what they do. They get it out of a channel. Obviously, everybody can see the channel. Everybody can see the channel. Pretty much all the major averages were sitting in some kind of channel here over the past couple of weeks. And now they have broken it to the bullish direction. And they see a lot of people being bearish on the market. They want to flip people from being bearish so they can be bearish and make those people bullish. They want to get people to take the positions that they have so that they can go into the direction of the market because they all have been talking about it. They all been talking about, you know, bearish on the market down to 3,200, 3,100, 3,000. And, you know, it's kind of hard to be bearish when still there's so much capital that is not allocated bearishly. Okay, I know we've seen an uptick in the PCC and the put call ratio, but we really have not seen capital allocation move out of long positions. Saw an interview the other day, basically was talking about that we have not seen a lot of capital allocation move off of the long side, even though people are talking about it so much. So that was kind of interesting to see that. So Alpha Hunters, this is what I'm expecting. I expect just a retest into the 390, maybe 395 area, maybe the lower ends of some of these bodied candles that we had back in late November, early December. And then after that, you know, especially as we get into earnings time, kicking off with financials this next Friday, I'd expect to see some bears coming back into the marketplace and probably start chopping us back down to the bear market lows. So Alpha Hunters, hope you all had a great New Year's. Let's go get it this year. Make sure you get your plans organized. Make sure you do your analytics on what you were good at last year, what you were bad at last year. Make sure you continue doing the things that work. Start to look, get that shopping list out, find those new long-term ideas you want to start buying up because we're going to probably get those opportunities here sometime in Q1 and Q2 to be buying a lot of high-quality names going into the future. All righty, Alphunders. Take care.